Welcome back to another high-level match of StarCraft 2. Now, what I've got for you today is a best of five series of top-level Terran versus Zerg, where in game number one, we find ourselves on the map Dragon Scales. Spotting right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the red Zerg drones, we have the number one player in the world. He's from Finland, and he goes by the name of Saro. His opponent, though, in this particular series, playing right here with the blue Terran SCVs, we have the winner of IEM Katowice back in February, and therefore this man is the StarCraft II World Champion. He's from China, and he goes by the name of Oliveira. Alrighty, Oliveira versus Serral in a best of five series. I've got a feeling this is going to be a very interesting match. So here's the thing, right? We all know that Serral is incredibly good at the game. He has been very good at the game for a very long time, right? I don't think that really requires any additional introduction. Serral, he's, he's looked like a top level player and honestly a top three player really for the last five plus years. And in my mind, he's considered to be, yeah, the very best StarCraft II player ever. Oliveira, though. Still a bit of a wild card. So every time I think about Oliveira's run at IEM Katowice, I get nerd chills, man. He had such an amazing tournament that weekend. So in case you missed it, I mean, sorry, you really did miss an absolute treat of a tournament. He ended up making it to the round of 12 where he took down Hero Marine. And I really thought, okay, Hero Marine is the favorite going into that series. Fair enough, Oliveira ended up winning. In the next round, he's facing off against Raynor. There's no way. Raynor's Terran versus Zerk is insane. There's no way he wins, and he did win against Raynor. Then in the next round, in the semifinals, he goes up against Hero. The man with the very best Protoss versus Terran in the world at the time. Really figured that Hero would quite easily be able to take down Oliveira. Not the case. Oliveira won 3-1. And then in the Grand Finals, he faces off against Maru. Maru, an absolute top-tier contender. Very best player from South Korea. And it just so happens to be that his best matchup is Terran versus Terran. Oliveira wins 4-1. I mean, that is such an insane run. I, I just, I, I can't get enough of that, man. Honestly, one of my absolute favorite stories for StarCraft 2, if not my absolute favorite. It's just such a ridiculous run. That being said, though, right? He had a miracle run. He had that amazing interview. I mean, I could keep talking about I am kind of it's for ages. Has he looked as dominant after that tournament? The simple answer is, well, sort of, sometimes, but not very consistently. So he's still winning games against some of the best players in the world. But going into this series, make no mistake, Serro is certainly the favorite. Now, by the way, this is uh, a series that was played a couple of days ago during the Kung Fu Cup. And I've said this many times, Serro doesn't really play smaller online tournaments. But what does it take for Serro to come out and play your, uh, your event? Well, he doesn't play in every single one of them, okay? He only signs up when he's got, uh, I guess, enough time and it fits in his schedule or whatever. Maybe when he's not golfing, he can occasionally play your event. What does it take, though? For Serral to play your tournament, it's going to be a quick Roach Warren here, and he's skipping link speed. Kung Fu Cups have about $1,500 on the line, about $1,500 uh, American, the equivalent. So apparently that is <laughs> that is what it takes for Serral to occasionally play your event. I really feel like if Serral decided to sign up for every single weekly cup, he could probably make a couple thousand bucks every week. Um, he decides to, yeah, not do so. I guess it's too much effort. The time zones also obviously don't always line up, and... Well, your life may uh, spiral out of control, but anyhow, Serral, bit of a giga chat move, decides not to play in everything. Anyhow, um, we've got ourselves a quick 1-1-1 right here with a third command center. If we're going to see a bench here right now for Oliveira, he is going to be A-OK -okay against the Roaches. That being said, though, I've seen Oliveira mess around, yeah, with Ravens. Okay, 10 Roach opener right here from Serral. So this is actually a very aggressive push. Um, Oliveira needs to see these Roaches ASAP so he can get a Benshee going really quickly. He needs a Benshee soon, preferably a bunker over here on the low ground as well. Something to slow down the Roaches. Serral though, okay, he's keeping track right here of exactly where those units are located. Look at him. Moving around there, trying to make sure that Oliveira does not see these roaches until the absolute latest possible time. Oliveira not big enough, or backing off, rather, to the high grass. Oh no, does he see this? Oh no. He sees one roach right now. Yeah, well, at this point, he must notice that there are a whole lot of his, or all of these roaches already knocking on his front door. This is a disaster in the making. Stimpak starts up, Marauder starts up. We've already had to switch Haru away from the starport at this point, though. So these roaches, they're going to be able to deal a tremendous amount of damage. And on the back of this, Serral is droning. 
I think if Saro can kill like five SCVs, this push is justified. But I've got a feeling he will kill quite a bit more than that. Now this is good. There you go. Sniping the Ravagers is really sweet. He's just trying to buy time, right? No bunker though on the high ground. That surprises me a bit. I really feel like there should be a little home for that Marauder and that group of Marines. Instead, we do have a... Uh, oh my god, a Widow Mine at least attempting to deal some damage. Notice though that at this point, yeah, no workers have gone down yet. So Oliveira very quick with the pool. He also decided to land his third base over at the third base location. I mean, there's an SCV building over there, but Hellions are going to be able to get rid of those slow links. They should also be able to get rid of that Roach. Marauder here eventually will go down. Crisis management, though, is on point here for Oliveira. Really lovely work. That was actually really sick, considering he didn't see this until the absolute latest moment. I mean, he's in a bad spot right now, but he certainly has made the best of this scenario. He still hasn't dealt with all of these roaches, though, right? That's kind of annoying. Raven trying to deal some damage. Eventually, that Ravager also does fall. And these units will be marching back home. Okay. Well, now you can go for the Sledgehammer attack, right? This is a classic Zerg timing. I'm assuming the... There you go. The Roach Speed will start up. So we have a 1-1 to get a rid of Roach Speed, finishing up all at the same time. Several already at 73 drones. So basically, while these upgrades are researching, he can just make non-stop a Roach Ravager. And at that point, when those upgrades are done, he hits a massive power spike. I've got a feeling it's going to be very difficult for Oliveira to hold that follow-up attack. So he needs to pump out siege tanks non-stop. Yeah, this is something that Serral sees right now as well. He's counting the barracks. He's like, okay, you're still on three wrecks? Pretty good for me then. I genuinely think that game number one is already pretty much over. <laughs> I don't really see how Oliveira is going to be able to hold this follow-up attack. He is going to need to pull a rabbit out of a hat. I mean, we're even going to saturate one gas geyser over here. That's a little cheeky, so I think that's just to squeeze out a couple more Ravagers. Sarah, of course, doesn't need to go for a push. He could transition into Lurkers if he really wants to. Okay, yeah, Oliveira realizes the, the situation that he's in, so he knocks down the rocks over here. A little bit of an Overlord drop as well on the right side of the map. We don't have OV speed, I don't think. Nah. It's going to take a moment, but... It takes a long moment if you're... There you go. Not loading them as quickly as possible. But these units are gonna hit at the same time as the majority of the army from the Zerg is gonna be hitting at the front. Yep. So, 177 army... Well, not army supply. 181 supply in total versus 115. There are a bunch of siege tanks. These roaches in the main are actually gonna be super annoying, though. Because at this point, you're obviously rallying everything that you've got here as a Terran player to the front. With a mine hit... Okay, retargeted. Pretty good connection there, all things considered. Do we have enough Ravagers? Well, Roaches in the main base are going to be a bit annoying. Serral's going to try and lend the balls right there on the Siege tanks. Okay, you know what? That worked way better than the, for the Terran than I thought it would be. Where's the rest of the army? I feel like there is more for the Zerg. Yeah, problem is these Roaches are still in the main base, being a little bit annoying. Where is all of the army? He's only got 14 Roaches, actually. He doesn't really have that much. Still, that small group of roaches in the main base may have actually just justified that entire attack. Metabolic boost is going to finish up here as well momentarily. Ling's right now running forward as well, though, providing high ground vision for the Biles. Oh, to connect not just with the tank, but also with the Metavex. And even though that defense was as good as it could have been, I think, for Oliveira, this is just too much, man. The reinforcements are showing up. Serral's transition towards 2-2 as well. Oliveira trying to start up his own plus two attack, but... I mean, he successfully started it. But I think that's about it. A little bit of high-level rock, paper, scissors, huh? Serral decided to go for a roach push against somebody who went 1-1-1. Could have been a very easy double benchy opener there for Oliveira, which I think would have put him in a really excellent position. Instead, Oliveira decided to go for the Raven because he didn't know, and yeah. That was a significant advantage right there for the Zork. From there on out, Serral decided to go for a relatively standard timing attack with a cheeky little drop in the main base, but that game was over really before it started right there for our Terran player. And that's sort of... Yeah, it can happen, right? In a game with imperfect information, when your opponent decides to take a chance, sometimes the dice may very well roll in their favor. Ancient Cistern is going to be map number two. Got ourselves a standard opener once again from Oliveira. Cyril mixing it up once again. 
For years, people criticized Serral for being too predictable. And it almost it almost feels like he took a little bit of offense to that, you know? He's like, okay, you, you called me predictable? I am gonna start mixing it up in every single one of my games. In a way, this always seems... I, I don't think he means it that way, but in a way, it always kind of seems to me that it's almost a little bit disrespectful. Like, I don't see Serral doing these builds against, for example, a Clem or a Maru. I don't see him doing... Yeah, those builds against the top-level macro Terrans. But when he's playing against somebody just slightly below that skill level, he likes to pull off some crazy builds and strategies, and... Well, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's got a golf appointment tonight, you know? He, <laughs> he needs to get this series over with as quickly as possible. Actually, I don't know what time zone this particular tournament is played in. So, the Kung Fu Cup, it's organized by Chinese tournament organizers. Uh, they're very passionate about the game, by the way. They've been doing this for many, many years. Big shout out to the Chinese community because, I mean, they're really keeping the game alive there, despite the fact that Blizzard has decided to shut down the Chinese servers, which still ah, grinds my gears. Anyways, um, I can imagine this is not the best time zone for Serral to play in. I know that Serral is the kind of guy who will live a relatively, uh, at least for pro gamer terms, a relatively normal, you know, schedule where he wakes up in the morning and he goes to bed in the evening. I know, it's a crazy concept. Uh, a lot of pro gamers, they, uh, they don't peak until like 1 in the morning, okay? Maybe maybe 10 p.m. is peak pro gamer time, but I think that's when Serral is usually already uh, heading off to bed. Anyways, um, I don't know what, what time slot this is played in. I can imagine that maybe for Serral this is middle of the night. Got ourselves a third hatchery here building as well for Serral. So he does have a, a round of links here on the right side of the map. In this particular game, Oliveira decided to skip the SCV scout. He decided to skip the Reaper scout as well. So we're just going straight into React Marines, which is definitely a little bit risky. Link speed is going to finish up here momentarily, and I don't think it's really going to achieve a whole lot. All right, Jimmy. Jimmy just run, dude. Yep. Excellent control right there, of course, from Oliveira. Uh, one thing to note, too, is that this is going to be played, I would imagine, on one of the American servers. It's always a bit tricky. If it's, for example, Korea going up against a European player, uh, they will be playing on the American servers, usually America Central or America West, uh, usually alternating in between games, actually. So it's sort of, you know, equally bad as far as ping goes for both players. Um, yeah, China and, uh, and, and Finland are pretty far apart. So I can imagine both players here are playing this with, like, Maybe 150 to 180 ping or so each, which is, at this level of play, very significant. For example, if you're Terran here and you're trying to stim your Marines and you're trying to target fire down Banelings, good luck. Everything you're doing is at like a 0.2 second delay, um, which, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, I don't think that's really going to happen. That's also actually one of the reasons why sometimes Clem can kind of struggle in some of these international tournaments. I think Clem usually plays mostly the European online cups, where... It's, you know, European server only, because he plays a very active playstyle, and he, you know, he, he relies heavily on micro, but the more ping you have, the more difficult it is to micro your units as well. Anyhow, bit of a different opener here, this time around from Oliveira. Nothing all too crazy, though, but he has got a faster starport, but a delayed third base, and that does, of course, allow him to make more units. The units he's decided to go with are Marines right here and a bunch of Hellions, and for some reason, Serral hasn't seen this. That actually surprises me. He's got units out all over the map. I guess Oliveira right here managed to fly those medevacs in the perfect direction. If there was a Hellbat army here, I think that would have been insanely potent. Oliveira definitely could have met an armory if he wants to. A lot of links are coming up. So they're all droning on the back of this, by the way. I think that might be a little bit overly ambitious. Good queen control, though. Transfusions coming in clutch. Oh, you know what? Making those extra drones was actually the right call. This guy's losing his mineral line. He's got no Zorklings anywhere, and he's like, yep, I'm gonna fire up four drones. Classic Serral. Okay, yeah, just micro the queens, bro. Lair coming up right now together with a bailing nest. Okay. Good start right here for Oliveira for sure, though. Obviously, going for the delay third command center does delay his economy a little bit as well, but honestly, nothing that he can't financially recover from. There's barracks number four and five going down in the main base. We've got the double NG bay. Look at his SCV, part of his, uh, or proud of his job. Apparently though, Oliveira not focused on that SCV, focused instead on this one medevac inside of the Zerg's main base. Roasts a couple more drones. 
Uh, we do really need to fire up one one though. Don't get too carried away here, man. Okay, there we go. You're unlikely to win a game like this with harassment units only, so it comes down to the big attacks, and getting these upgrades going is absolutely critical for that. Okay, there we go. We do get them started. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Sarah going a single Evo chamber, getting the carapace upgrade there, so the Zerk armor, into the Baneling speed as well, and now a second evolution chamber. Okay, not something we normally see Zerk players do. Zerk usually starts both upgrades for the Evo chambers at the same time. This means that those upgrades, much like the Terrans here, are going to be a little bit disconnected. It's going to be very easy to accidentally forget one of them. Creep spread, though, still looking really good right here for the finisher. <laughs> it happened again, by the way, in the most recent video where I casted Serral. Is he going to be able to snipe that hatch? Nah. I mean, the Widow Mines are annoying. Widow Mines, though, also, yeah, dealing a bunch of friendly damage. In the most recent game I featured Sarah, I was looking at the YouTube comment section and somebody corrected me saying, Loco, people from Finland are called Finns, not finishers. <sighs> Which I, I think is just, it's one of my favorite YouTube comments that I, I've received dozens of times at this point. Just to clarify to that one person that may be watching this video too, um, that's one of Sarah's nicknames. He's very good at, you know, finishing tournaments. And he's from Finland. It's, you know, it's not a very clever pun, but it's pretty good. <laughs> but it's it is very funny whenever somebody's like actually loco people from Finland are called Finns, not finishers. <laughs> it would be amazing though if you know a group of people from a country is called finisher. That would be sick, man. You can call me a Dutcher or a Netherlander. That would work just fine for me. Anyways, little matter of fact, drop over here does get cleaned up, but this is opening up the front door for the units on the left. Yeah, to deal some damage. Metavex are out of energy, though. Metavex over here still have quite a bit remaining, and Oliveira is starting to pick up the pace. Lovely work here. Grabbing that supply advantage as well, trying to hit his opponent at many different angles at once. Really good work right here by the Chinese Terran. That multitasking is usually where Terran players do get an advantage. But again, Serral is very strong when it comes to defending this sort of stuff, too, yeah. So I think a lot of Terran players, they see themselves winning by just dropping in 17 different angles at once. Because Zerk needs to put out fires everywhere and at some point they'll slip up and the whole hatchery burns down. Uh, at this point, I wouldn't say that there has been a major misstep for the Zerk. But it's also not been, you know, he's got a lot of drones, that's really good, right? But it's also not game winning amounts of damage. Good splits right here on these Widow Mines. Good retargeting as well! <laughs> Nicely done, Oliveira. You can retarget Widow Mines. The average guy on the ladder is not out there retargeting Widow Mines. But if you do, you can certainly mess up with Zerks that are trying to, yeah, micro against it. Serral already looking away again from that fight because he figured he did the split. And he needed to deal with a drop elsewhere. Widow Mine drop over here once again, trying to be obnoxious. Okay. Good start right here for sure for our Terran player. 2 2 has been started up. Nice and quickly. Looks like he stayed on top of those upgrades. Drilling claws as well. That's going to allow those Widow Mines to burrow quite a bit quicker. Serral, though, is transitioning towards the Hydrolis den right now. He's starting to lose the tempo out of this game, right? Look at the creep spread. It was excellent a couple of minutes ago. Oliveira, though, has been hitting his opponent at so many different angles that Serral's been pushed back. Now, one thing you can do as Zerk is, well, Hydrolis Bane is good. But I was thinking Lurkers here. I think eventually we probably will see a Lurker transition, which is really good at shutting down all of this tempo-based aggression. But we're nowhere even remotely close to that just yet. Excellent fight here once again for Oliveira. Oliveira trying to pre-split right here against Banelings. He knows that there's quite a few of them available, and most of his Widow Mines are currently on cooldown. I think it's time to pick up and get on out of there. No, he disagrees. Getting so much value there. Ooh. Yeah, so those engagements are really sketchy. Where you have a bunch of ping. It doesn't maybe sound significant. Maybe Oliveira isn't even... In, I, I'm assuming he's playing this from China. Anyways, um, it's very easy for that to be an absolute disaster if you're not paying super close attention and you're calculating in the ping as well. Okay, so we don't have a lurker then. No, maybe eventually. I guess Sarah wants to stick around on this army composition for a bit longer. But then have Hydras in the mix too. Hydras are really nice because they do outrange Widow Mines. Okay. 
Good connection once again. Really good stuff actually here coming out of Oliveira. Alright, eventually though, a bunch of Banelings do connect. Matter of fact, drop here at the bottom of the map once more. Also, putting on the pressure. Oliveira picks up and gets him out of there. Oh, interesting. So he's going for a Liberator transition. He does not have a Ghost Academy. This is a relatively new... Yeah, a relatively new thing in this particular matchup. A lot of Terrans are fun to go for a lot of... Um, a lot of Liberators when they don't see the Zerg transitioning towards Lurkers or Ultras or Brute Lords or Infestors or Vipers or anything like that. So Hydraling Bane happens to be an amazing unit composition against Ghosts. And Terrans are like, yo, what do we do right now? A lot of people would just stick around on more Marine Marauder, Medivac, Mine. Any unit that starts with the letter M. Oh, this is a good engagement right here for Sarah. Really good engagement right here for Sarah. Liberators, though, are a good addition, usually. Especially with advanced ballistics, with the ranged upgrade, they can be fantastic. Okay, suddenly, though? Yeah. One fight goes wrong, and you can see that Sarah was trying to capitalize on it. Don't think it's really happened yet, but... That fight certainly puts Sarah back on the map. Immediately, we've got some more creep going around. Yeah, the tumors are moving forward. Okay. Tempo advantage, no longer as great. That Widowmine hit over there as well also ended up dealing damage to the Terran army. Overseer coming in clutch once again, providing as much vision as possible. Sarah decides to hold position some of these units. Probably a little concerned right here for the Libs. Yeah, Lips coming out here once again. Liberator's just dealing as much damage as possible. This one actually has done a lot of damage. Yeah. I think she got a queen, as well as nine drones. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, Serral still though at 91 drones. Now the Hive has started up. One excellent unit against basically everything here that Oliveira has is the Viper. Vipers are good at abducting liberators, but they can also throw blinding clouds. We've got some burrowed banelings, by the way. Very dangerous for Terran. Oh, God. He's gonna back up. Oh, oh, okay. Well, he's fine. He's fine. He's okay. <laughs> Can be a disaster. Are there more burrowed banelings anywhere? Doesn't look like it. You gotta be so cautious, though, man. Sometimes it's so easy to get carried away microing your widow mines and your marines and all that. Big link counterattack right now, though, from Serral. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have any defensive planetaries here set up just yet. A lot of Terrans are fun to go for, you know, planetaries and choke points. Now, this is a good catch, though, I think. Yeah, these Hydras, this is a one-way trip. I don't know if they realized it when they left the hatchery. Now, that Widow Mine, or sorry, that Zork Widow Mine, the Baneling, it dealt a ton of damage. But Oliveira does hold. Zero workers were killed so far, by the way, from the Zerk. We've seen quite a few units in mineral lines here, but apparently the SCVs have scrambled away just barely in time. Base in the bottom right hand corner taken. Ghost Academy is indeed out. We're gonna see that Ghost transition. So Ghost Liberator, Marine Marauder Mine, absolute banger of a unit comp. Vipers indeed coming up. Serral did not find the money though to make a Lurker then. So he's really just getting the Hive here for upgrades and then for Vipers. Not really improving his unit composition as far as, like, you know, his core army goes. Planetary is over here, of course, at the 12 o'clock position. There's a planetary over here, too. Would love to see this expansion here taken in the middle. Oliveira, though, doesn't love that expansion on the, well, the Zerg side of the map, so he decides to make a move in that direction. Widow Mines, literal minefield here, trying to do a lot of damage. Not that much of a backbone, though, here for that Terran army. Yeah, he needs to pick up and get on out of there once again. That's because part of the army is on the left side of the map. Oliveira manages to snipe that hatchery he started working on ages ago. And rather than picking up, decides to stick around and snipe another queen. Liberator here in the bottom right. Trying to be annoying. 14 kills on that one. Can definitely re it over here too if he wants to. Okay. Yeah, Oliveira showing us that game number one was uh, unfortunate, right? Okay, here's the abductions, though, that I was talking about. Very annoying. Still not a backbone here. He's even EMPing freaking uh, Banelings right now. I don't think that's ideal. We have that group over there getting cleaned up. A bunch of drones are being sniped, too. Where is that? There's that Liberator out there somewhere, man. I think it must have just gotten destroyed. Sarah has now lost 41 workers, but he still has 80 drones remaining. 
Okay. Desperate times call for desperate measures. We're going for an incredibly micro-heavy army. Infestors are being added on here for the Zerg. Fungal growth, of course, an excellent way to get back into the game. Triple command center on the back of this two from Oliveira. He's setting himself up for a proper late game. This is what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, that's very expensive. It's super easy for Terran to accidentally lose some of their heavy hitters. <laughs> Cute little move right there on the Bane link. We have the... Ghost Dove being supported here as well by more and more Liberators shortly. Yep. So we've got the Fusion Core coming up. That's where you get the Advanced Ballistics. That's the Liberator ranged upgrade. Uh, with another Reactor going down there. Oliveira is going to be able to start pumping out those units four at a time. So no, no Ghost Mech here. That's the main thing to note. Ghost Mech is an excellent option in this situation, but Terrans over the last couple of weeks have been experimenting with this change instead. There are a bunch of burrowed banelings, by the way. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Could have definitely gotten some juice there, but... Not the case. Wait on my drop here in the bottom right corner. Metafec does go down. These guys. Sorry, dudes. You can look at the Artosa Lopez, you die, okay? That's what you really get to do. Has any SCV... Oh, one SCV has gone down at this point, okay. Lurker then, on the back it is too. Yeah, so he wanted to get here eventually. I think if it was up to Cero, he would have transitioned here a little bit quicker. But he probably figured out, yo, if I make that, you know, set of upgrades and the structure and all of that. If I invest all my resources into that right now, I will get overwhelmed by the Terran. So even though he would have liked to, the proper decision there was to delay it. This is really good though. Really good right here for Oliveira. Yep. Getting a few dozen Zerklings. Forcing the Council there as well on that hatchery. Lovely work. Okay, high sec auto tracking coming up. Let's go, dude. That's the... Uh Missile turret and planetary fortress range upgrade. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's pretty good. It is pretty good too, man. Easily forgotten though. Okay. Couple of libs will get pwned. This is a scary push. Is Sarah gonna collapse on top of this? There are so many widow mines. He does decide to push into this. Those Banelings, though, oh my god, they're getting through. We did have a nice fungal growth as well, coming in clutch from the high ground. Did he just... Really? I did not think that that fight was going to go even remotely as well as it did. I really feel like he was playing with fire there, though, because if one of those Widow Mines would have been retargeted into the clump of Banelings, and those Banelings fell before they got close to that Ghost Army, um, I think that would have been an absolute disaster for the Zerg. Honestly, may have been a, a game-winning moment for Oliveira. Luckily for Serral, though, the Bane Leagues, for the most part, stayed alive. I think he's taking some chances here. He realizes, yo, it's... It's do or die here, eventually. This game hasn't really been going my way. I'll start taking some, uh, yeah. Some rock, paper, scissors, uh, engagements once again, right? It's, it's a little bit risky. But sometimes you might just get lucky. Another Infestor here on the high ground. Neural Parasite not available, but it certainly can get a fungal. A lot of drones not mining, though. That is rough. They're chasing around another one of the drones here. Liberator range at this point. Very powerful. Difficult for the Zerg to actually clean that up, but eventually the Hydra does get within range. Oliveira trying to create a choke point over here in the bottom right -hand corner. He's sending all of his reinforcements in this direction. Some good abductions here, though, once again by the finisher. Trying his best. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of additional siege tanks or something like that at this point, but maybe that's a scary transition to make when you know there's already vipers up in the air. Okay, well, oh, a lot of big hits right here as well. As a matter of fact, will I get out? Okay, he does snipe a couple of them. Olivera bleeding out a lot of units here, though. I actually think he's playing this a bit too aggressively. He does have good economy, but a lot of these bases are going to start running low here very soon. That's why he's trying to secure this base. No planetary fortress, though, in this spot. Now lurkers are coming up. Both of these guys, man, so fast. Drones moving on over towards the top left-hand corner as well. Liberator in that direction would not be misplaced. Zork is so far away from uh, sending any uh, Hydras or a Viper in that direction.
Okay. He's trying to distract the Terran army right now. Distraction successful, as now some of these units here will get sniped. I would really love to see a planetary in this location. I don't know why we've decided to fly in an orbital command. Very risky. Yeah, no way you can push in, though. <laughs> no way you can push up that ramp. As long as Oliveira's in position, there's the medevac drop. That's even better. But 20 supply of Terran dedicated to taking down this base. Zerg, well, I mean, is busy over here. This may very well trigger Serral to move over towards this high ground, but it's going to be difficult to make that call. That hatchery in the top left, super dead. Lovely play right here from Oliveira. Really good stuff. Okay. Driving it home, though, is going to be tough. He basically needs to bleed out the Zerg on the amount of bases that they've got. Can't really do much about the base anymore in the bottom right. Can't really shut down the base in the center either. But I think shutting down the bases in the top left, very viable. At some point, these bases will dry out. We're probably about five minutes away. Okay, we do have some good abductions there. Snipe as well on both of the Vipers. But now Cyril sees, wait a second, there's no planetary fortress on this high ground. I can actually just move straight forward. This is what I was worried about. Terra now suddenly finds himself into a field of spines. That's a lot of Metavex going down. Cyril decides to put all of his eggs in one basket. A risky choice for sure, but I think it's just barely, yeah, working out for him. Man, imagine if that was a planetary. That would have been impossible to do. I don't think you could do that. Especially with building armor and all that. It's, in it's incredibly hard. One thing to note here as well, though, for Oliveira is that he doesn't actually have any upgrades past the ones for Bio. He does have plus two, I guess, for the Widow Mines, but it would be really nice to have some attack upgrades for the Libs. Okay. That engagement was a win for sure for Sero. Making sure that Zerk is not mining that base in the top left is critical here. Yeah, Oliveira trying his very best, though, to resecure this position right over here. Serral moving forward right now. Widowmines betraying the Terran Dominion there, too. We have another Lurker very ambitiously, very far forward. Liberator up in the skies. Okay, at the very least, putting a halt to this advancement right here of the Zerg for the time. Scan over there reveals where that Zerg army is located. Do we have any Vipers remaining? Just a single Infester. That one's moving on over in this direction. Oliver is actually running dry on money right now. I don't think he should be making new command centers, man. How many command centers does he have? Uh, not as extreme, actually, as some Terran players out there. I was a little concerned he was sitting at, like, 15 at this point. We've seen that happen before, and then they just run out of money because they, you know, put too much money into CCs. Losing this base was rough. Now, I think what he's gonna try and do is make a planetary in the top left. But as soon as he leaves the bottom right alone, which is what he's gonna do right now, Zork is going to take this base. I don't see a reason why Serral should not be taking this base. Even though these mineral fields maybe, you know, maybe they're dirty, right? From the Zork's point of view. They've been touched by the Terran SCVs. Ugh, gross. Um, I, it's still definitely the right call. There's no reason for Zork not to have this. Okay, so. Oliveira's lifeline right now is going to be the top left-hand corner. Serral, once again, setting up a giant... Uh, <laughs> giant? <laughs> I want to say gigantic and giant at the same time. It's a new word I just came up with. Giant with seven A's. Um, I don't think he can set up the giant engagement over here, though. That's so many liberators up in the sky. That's a lot of widow mines as well. Getting the snipe on the hatch would have been nice here, but instead we end up losing a bunch of marines and marauders. Somehow that marauder ends up living. Okay, he's even responsible for killing the base right now. Let's go. Lurkers in the meantime, though, being annoying. Yeah, they're just burrowed all over the map. Hatchery here did get destroyed, but the top left-hand corner has been secured. Okay. Serraldo still with a lot of miney. Uh, <laughs> it's early in the morning as I'm casting this, guys. A lot of mining, a lot of money. I'm making up my new, my new vocabulary here. The beauty about the English language is that you guys probably still understood what I was trying to say. Context is everything. Um, this game is actually nuts. I think Serral is still coming out ahead, though. Yeah, the trades have been incredibly aggressive, and I think Oliveira on multiple occasions thought he was winning the game. And I actually was with him. 
against every other Zerg player on the planet, I think he would have won. Saraldon managed to be very resilient and take some excellent engagements there. Splitting against the Widow Mines and trying to make us, uh, yeah, create as much value out of his spellcasters as possible. Put him in a good enough spot. No detection over here. It's a lot of Liberators still up in the air, though. But apparently this is the moment where he decides to collapse. There's a fungal growth! A parasitic bomb! The one more combo right there on all of those clumped up Liberators! Sick play right there from Serral. Comes down from the left with a freaking fungal. Parasitic bomb on top of it immediately from the Vipers. That was basically that entire Liberator army getting cleaned up. Serral is knocking at the front door of the natural. And even though it felt to me like he was up with his back against the wall for the first 25 minutes of this game. He managed to avoid all the punches and he actually obtains the victory. Babylon, map number three. I fast forwarded through the first couple minutes of the game. Both players opening up with the most standard of standard builds. I noticed, by the way, the earlier I cast games in the morning, the more words I come up with. <laughs> I, I should one day set my alarm at like 3.30 and record a video at 4. I'll barely be talking English at that point, okay? I'll just be making noises that sort of sound English, but... <laughs> it's like half Dutch mixed in together with... Uh, yeah, no, it's... It's an entirely new vocabulary we'll be coming up with. Triple CC opener right here from Oliveira. Triple hatchery start as well for uh, Mr. Cerro. Cerro's still one of the very few Zergs who prioritize getting metabolic boost as fast as possible. Most Zerg players at this level, they do pull drones out of gas before mining 100. That way they can get the third base up before the Reaper arrives, but Cerro's like, nope. I prefer having the link speed done. I prefer making sure that I don't fall too far behind and... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm confident that I can still grab the third base when I want it anyways. Can be kind of annoying, though. It's not uncommon for Zerg players on the ladder to play this exact build that Serral just went for. Can he get the tumor? He will get the tumor, but he does lose the Reaper. Honestly, if I was Serral, I would insta-cancel Metabolic Boost and go for a Roach Warren. I, I do this every time against Terran. It's insanely OP. They're probably going to go for a Benchy here, though. I think that makes a lot of sense, but... Council link speed, straight Roach Warren. I think this has to be a Benchy. That's the one downside, I guess? Yeah. When Terrans lose the Reaper, it is giving them the heads up that there's a very good chance that Zerk is gonna go for a Roach Bush, and therefore they have to go for a Benchy, which is probably also precisely the reason why Serral does not follow up with a Roach Bush. On the latter, though, when they donate the Reaper to you, I highly recommend you Council link speed, go straight to Roach Warren. Anyways, um, what was I trying to say? I was trying to say something that would make me sound very smart. Uh, I don't remember. It turns out I'm dumb after all. We all knew that already. If you enjoy my dumb videos, though, make sure you hit the like button down below. It really does help. If you want to watch more of them, you should hit the subscribe button. I mean, I'm just saying. If you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon, you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I try to post new content pretty much every single day. And, of course, I also have a second channel, that's youtube.com slash moreloco, which is where I post other games. Games that I've streamed on Twitch. There's, uh, I don't know, a load of games up there right now these days. Uh, that channel, though, it's getting about two to three new videos every day, because I do play a lot of different games, too. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Gabriel for editing all those videos and getting them up on that channel. Got ourselves a lair coming up right now for the Zerk. Bailing nest on the back of this. And here's where the harassment begins. Yep. Serral decides to go for the fourth hatch over here. Interesting fourth hatch location. Brenda is super dead. Nice and toasty queen. Oh, queen surround coming right up. This is kind of funky, actually. I don't know how this works out. Yeah, that's going to be a bunch of dead hellions, isn't it? Well, actually, not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. These queens just, uh, yeah, uh, looked at the hellions, shot a couple spines, but... Other than killing the two we saw going down, nothing all too amazing right there. But at least the hatchery does live. Must be kind of scary, though. I mean, when you think about it, a Hellion looks like a rather large car. At least, you know, for European standards. The Queen must be gigantic. <laughs> like, the Queen is like a walking house. <laughs> it's like a, like a, like a little, little, 
Like a caravan type of thing. Anyways. Apparently, though, the Hellions don't care. Nah. These are some of the bravest drivers that the Terran Dominions ever had. Quick Hydra then, though, this time around. Baneling Speed has started up as well. 1-1 one, one has begun here for Serral. Same thing happening on the other side of the map for Oliveira. Not the Hydra then part, but the upgrade part. Stimpak just finished. No mech play or anything along those lines. Doesn't really surprise me all too much, even though Battle Mech can be quite powerful. Ooh, ooh, getting the wrap around. Really lovely work. Okay, that was an excellent snipe right there for Cyril. That's all of the Hellions down. And that does slow down the tempo a little bit. With bio-based armies, you do kind of aim for that tempo advantage, especially with the way that Oliveira likes to play. He could go for a big parade push straight through the center of the map, certainly an option. But most of the time, he is more of a tempo kind of guy who will drop in every angle and then, you know, try to get rid of all the creep and then make himself up for a big attack later on. Don't lose the Raven. Love the Raven here, by the way, but look at the creep spread already. Maybe that's the reason why Serral decided to take the fourth over here. So he can creep up this entire section of the map a little bit more confidently. Yeah, I do love the Raven because it's a detector. So obviously you don't actually need to scan 17 times. But look at that, man. Not only do we have Hydras in the game, we've got the mythological Hydra here in the form of creep tumors. You kill one of them and three new ones appear immediately. This creep is going to start knocking at the fourth base of Terran by the time that he tries to take one. Unless he takes it here on the left side of the map, then I don't think it's going to reach. But if he decided to go for the one up here, uh, I've got a feeling it would be very difficult for him to actually take it. Okay. So where is this going to go? I think Serral will be more than happy to just defend. Okay, that Raven is responsible though for killing so many of those creep tumors, or at least enabling the kill of so many of those creep tumors. Drilling Claw starts up. We're prioritizing. Ah, okay. I was gonna make a comment of that, Olivero, but good correction there. Take notes, Bjorn. Bjorn oftentimes gets the wrong upgrades going there. I don't know why. Attack upgrade when I mean, you can only afford one. 100% the one to prioritize. Serral definitely does have a timing potential here too if he wants to. He could make a big push, for example, well, any time really, between right now and 2-2 finishing. Preferably, though, when the upgrades finish up, that's usually when you want to go for an attack, but he really doesn't need to. He can go Hive together with a Lurker then. Life's going to be pretty sweet for him. Yeah, that fourth base is super late compared to the Zerk. I mean, Zerk is already mining a fifth. He could make more drones if he wants to, but he also doesn't really need to do that either. So I think I'll be more than happy to just sort of play the macro game. Good clearing out of the creep, though. Yeah, we saw a ton of creep here in the middle of the map earlier. There's still quite a bit of it right now, too, but not as worrisome as it was earlier, that's for sure. Barracks number six, seven, and eight coming right up. And that's going to be all the barracks we'll have in this game, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, he wants to collapse on top of this. This is definitely, by the way, a great map for Zerg, specifically because of engagements like that one. It is pretty easy for Zerk to set up surrounds. The tanks end up going down. That was an absolute bloodbath right there. Is there enough for Oliveira to continue pushing? Well, at the very least, he got rid of the creep. A hundred Zerklings on the dot right there for Saro. But again, rapid firing out so many creep doomers so quickly. These queens don't even have energy for that. Hive is going to finish up here momentarily. Okay, this is a good spot, though. I love this. Oliveira actually, yeah, camping right here in the middle of the map. Setting up a little tent. Maybe a watering post. A couple missile turrets wouldn't be misplaced. Sensor tower. He could, <laughs> he could do many things. A sandwich bar. Serral realizes it, though. Yeah, he doesn't want to deal with this, so he decides to just push forward. Very risky decision, but I think that previous fight with the connection on all of those marines may have been good enough to justify Zerk to attack into it. That said, though, yeah, it's not like Terran had a small army sitting out there either. Now Liberators are coming up. It's going to be very difficult to recreep this position. 
Okay, lurkers, or sorry, hydras, little baby lurkers. They do manage to get underneath the liberators. Widow mines over here. They did already fire, no detection available. Looks like we had, I'm gonna back up, sorry. Looks like during all of that, we had a bailing roll by too. Because of course. Because of course we've got a bailing roll by here too. Just play faster, hello. Uh, this is difficult for Terran to hold though, because Terran's obviously stutter stepping right now in the middle of the map. And that's when suddenly those main links can blow up your mineral line. Nine SCVs is nothing all too crazy though, especially for that many bane links. Can be hard to secure another base here. Usually we see the fifth expansion taken over here, or the fifth base, all the way up north. No vipers are being uh, produced here as well by Cyril. Once again, we have a push, uh, at least attempted. Planetary Fortress here on the left side of the map. We don't mind. Beautiful. I don't know about you guys, but that is that is hot. We could look at the bailings going down, but I'm gonna actually go back and just look at this this again. Okay, we could look at the bailings now blowing up. As, that is that is hot. Okay. I don't care. That that is yeah. Also, SCVs died. I've tried that in many of my games. I know many of you have given that a try too. And then you pull the wrong circling and all your all your units end up dying in that spot and you feel so dumb. Please tell me I'm not the only one that's happened to. I cast so many pro games that I feel inspired by them all the time, man. I'm like, oh yeah, I got this. Let me just split my Marines and my Marauders. See how it goes. Banglings once again, though, man. Those Widow Mines also just dealing so much damage. I don't know if I like the idea of going Widow Mines too much on this map. Almost a disaster. I don't think Olivera realized it. I feel like the Widow Mines in this game have done about as much damage to the Terran army as they have against the Zerg. And I don't think the same could really be set for our previous game. Ghosts coming out. So ghosts are excellent here. Lurker Den coming up as well. So we're not really rushing Lurker Dens anymore. We're sticking around in Hydroling Bane and then add on a couple of Vipers. And then eventually there's going to be some Lurkers hitting the battlefield too. Serral decides to go for a big attack. Blinding Clouds do land right here on both of the Siege Tanks. EMPs were landed too on the Vipers. But it looks like the Blinding Clouds did already go off before that. And that allows the Swarm to run in. It's Serral, who obtains the victory 3-0 over the world champion of StarCraft 2.